find Gertrude fascinating because she's such a pivotal character in Hamlet. Uh, and like a lot of the female characters, she doesn't get to say much. But she is one of those women who has had so much misogyny thrown at her by the men in the play. I really, I read or watch that play and I always think, I want you to speak. I want mm. you to speak up for yourself, you know. So um, that's why I'm fascinated by her. And why now? Well, why not now? Why not now? You know, there's an awful lot happening in the world at this minute, um, which is around giving women a voice that they may not feel they've had before, that they may not have actually had before. And the Me Too movement and the Time's Up movement's really inspiring. But also in, in theatre, it's inspiring to see plays like Amelia and The Testament of Mary giving female characters a voice that's very direct and modern, actually. And I think that Hamlet can be as modern a play as you want it to be. And here he comes. Of course. Like Judge Dredd. Stride in the air. Like some kind of colossus. Oh, he's not keeping his distance now, is he? No, he's coming right up to me. <laughs> Suddenly he's there. At the end of Hamlet, they're all dead. All the principal characters are dead. So we start in purgatory. And we start with, well, with a sense of looking back at life as it was at court. Uh, and Gertrude is struggling with struggles in her family, individual struggles, um, the problems she had with her reputation, with her son, and the immense pressures that she has with her. And all of that starts to come alive here in a very brutal fashion. But the thing that I found particularly interesting is the relationship between playing out these scenes and making a theatrical statement with them, but also the use of telling, the use of telling the story. Oh, and I look great. But instead of state affairs, it would be, I don't know, Gertrude, why don't you come over here and talk to the ambassador who's really interested in meeting you and asking you about this bribery. Gertrude, why don't you come and talk about what, uh, what trends we're going to have for the, for the great big banquet. Gertrude, can you talk to Ophelia? Her mother has died and she needs someone. Gertrude, get a hold of your son. He's a total idiot. Not fit to be king. Gertrude, do this. Gertrude, do that. Gertrude, Gertrude. Have a Gertrude, don't sleep with your husband's brother. <laughs> it's a live drum score which is really exciting, um, and so that makes it... It's not gig theatre, but it's got that feeling, it's got that sense of possibility, you know, um, there's a lot of interplay, there's a lot of improvisation that goes on between myself and the drums. So it's for people who like new and cutting-edge experimental sort of um, forms, I suppose, but at the same time, it hangs together really, really well as a story, so it's for people who love a good story. I don't know why she went in there in the first place, but I do know she changed her mind and she scraped her way to try and get out of that river. She did. And I told them she went singing to her death. There are two more opportunities to see the show uh, before we open it and tour it, where it's still in development uh, and it will be more more developed in <laughs> May, uh, where we take it to Theatre Royal, where we're part of an international theatre festival. Um, and then later in May, we're taking it to Greenwich Theatre. I'm going to stay here. Yeah, you heard me. I'm going to stay here because I've got about as much intention of finding the perfect brioche as I have of doing another jigsaw! I could practically smell uh, the red uh, dust that Debs was talking about and it was a bit like an emo emotional roller coaster really. I was going from being really intensely worried and upset in, with the scenes of domestic violence to laughing at those kind of really light, frivolous, beautiful, joyful moments. So yeah, absolutely brilliant. It's taken me on a real um, adventure and journey tonight. Thank you.
Yeah. Uh, so it's a very refreshing performance, having seen a lot of Hamlets as someone who teaches Shakespeare. It was really good to see something from Gertrude's viewpoint where the woman's voice is central to everything that's going on. It was lovely that Ophelia was reclaimed as a character as well and made a little bit more assertive as someone with fight. Uh, and I'm really glad that she, she hinted at the dark relationships there between her and old Hamlet. Um, absolutely loved it. Um, just brilliant. Debs is fantastic. There's, there's no need for for any um, any costumes or no need for a, hardly any props. She's just her the, the way she talks and the way she mimes and acts is just absolutely wonderful. It's like you're having a bedtime story read to you in that all the images come into your head and you're there with her. You're on stage with her. You're watching and it's so believable. It's brilliant. Very funny. Um, just really, really loved it. Funny and sad at the same time, but just brilliant. Great stuff. I thought the pace was perfect and the pitch that we could follow it very, very quickly. I don't know a lot about Hamlet. I know a little bit, but not a lot. But I could actually follow what exactly was happening. So now I'm going to go away and read Hamlet and look at the text. So that is brilliant. Debbie was absolutely fantastic and so was the uh, drummer. I think that it's just a great big like roller coaster of adrenaline where it's like going into the best dream you ever had and sliding in and out of surreal images and powerful characters. I just loved the whole thing. It was fabulous. I really, really enjoyed it. I thought it was really imaginative and forceful, both the performer and with the drums. And it's a bit like Shakespeare and Dali in your living room.